Hi, I'm Justin Snedden from the AR team at Niantic and today I'm going to walk you through how to use occlusions in our system. We'll build a very small project uh, which will allow you to place a uh, character or a cube into the scene and then show you how the occlusions work both in the editor and on device. To start this project I'm assuming that you've already walked through our getting started tutorial, you have built a project, you've set it up to run so that you can run on device. Uh, the easiest way to do that is that you've you've opened your new project, you've imported the AIDK. I tend to just pull in the examples for things like this and open one of them and then get that to run on the phone to ensure you've set up whatever you needed to do for the particular device, whether it's Android or iOS. So that aside, I'm assuming you've got something that works and runs. Let's uh, start building our first example. So the first thing we want to do is probably make a folder to store this in. So we'll just create a folder and we'll call it occlusions. And in there we will make a new scene. We'll also call that occlusions. And let's open that. So what we have is a very basic scene. It doesn't do anything at the moment. The very first thing that you do with any of these tutorials is you start adding in the managers that you'll need to use in order to enable the features you want. So in this case, we wanted occlusions. Occlusions are part of the depth system. So we'll need a depth manager. We will need also to adjust the camera and render this. So we'll need a camera position helper and we'll need a rendering manager. Finally, in order to just run AR in general, you need an AR session manager. So we need to add all of these uh, manager objects into our scene in order to just get started. I am, for simplicity's sake, just going to drop them all on the camera, but you're okay with arranging your hierarchy however you would like for your game. If you want a particular nesting or shape to where objects go, that's fine too. Uh, but as I said, for, for simplicity, I'll just put them all here. So as I said, the first thing we want to add is an AR session manager. So we drop in one of these components. This is, uh, it'll add in a few extra bits and pieces here. This is a compatibility checker. But as you can see, this is the, the session manager script here. Uh, it is set to automatically run, so when you start, it'll kick in AR straight away. If you turn this off, you then in code can enable it when you need it. So if, if you had a button or a menu where you wanted to drop into your AR, you would toggle this. All right, let's keep going. Let's add another component. We need to add a rendering manager. our rendering manager and we also need to add a position help. Now what these two scripts do, the rendering manager makes sense, it handles rendering of the AR scene for you and position helper what it does is it moves the camera based on where your phone is. Something to always notice is make sure that these uh, cameras are set, if they're not then you'll get a weird response so just open that up and point that at the main camera. Let's keep going. So uh, one more thing we need, uh, because we want to do occlusions, occlusions need depth, so we add in the depth manager. Uh, we want the AR depth manager in particular, this one here. Uh, there's a few extra things that pop up because I have the examples, so just make sure that you take note of the names of these and drop them in. The default settings for all of these will be absolutely fine and should work. So let's do a quick save. Now running this, is basically not really going to do much. Like we don't have anything in the scene, so let's do a few more adjustments. Back on the camera, something that's quite important is that we want this to be a solid color because we don't need the sky dome here, and that we want the background to be uh, completely black. So let's just adjust that now. And again, quick save. So what we've got is a scene that doesn't do anything, so maybe we want to add some objects in there so that we can test in editor before we test on device. So what we'll do is we'll add in some mocking objects. As I ha already have the examples folder here, um, I can look for the mock-up scene, which is already made, which is the one you see in all of our examples, and just drop that in, and you'll get a little room with a table and some objects in it. You can happily build your own uh, layout here. We will have uh, another tutorial on just all of the general things you can do with Virtual Studio and the various mocking systems that we have, but for now, I'm just gonna drop this in uh, so it makes it a quicker demo. The thing that, ha that that this needs to work is a particular layer in your scene and you'll see over here that this layer is blank, it's missing. Uh, we need to just add this uh, layer called ARDK Mock World. Now if you had run 
it would give you an error message telling you that the, the layer is missing, but I already knew it was, so I've just straight away told us to add that in. Now that we've got that, we need to set it and ensure that it's set to all the children here. So I double click it again and say yes to all children because you want all of the objects that are on, under here to be in that same layer. So now that we've got that, the last change we need to make is back on the camera. We only want this to show up when we are in editor. We do not want to see it when we're on device. So for the AR camera here, we go in and we say culling mask. We don't want to see the mock world. Uh, so now as you can see when we run this, you've got the in the editor view uh, of the, the room that we made and we can move around here and everything is working. Now, again, it's not very much of an impressive demo because there's, there's, there's nothing in here to be occluded. But let's add in an actual object. Sorry, the reason this is blank is I didn't click on the scene view, which is what I should have done before. So here we go, we've got some objects. So as these are all in the, the mock world, it's pretending that they came in from the camera footage and were created via our machine learning model. What we want to then do is add in our digital object, whatever we want. So for example, a creature, uh, I am going to use our Yeti model, which is Captain Dotty, right here and I'm just going to drop that model into our scene. There we go. And you see we have a little Yeti here. Let's just move them into a position where they're in the room. Put them behind the table and I will spin them around so that they're facing us when we run the game. So the next thing we need to make sure is here that the layers are correct also for this model. So there's nothing set here, we just want this to be in the default layer. So let's just change that, change it all the children. Now, if I run this, I should have Dotty in the scene. Oh, that's a little bit misaligned. Let's actually put them on the ground. Let's uh, move that down a bit. There we go. Where's the ground? Oh, there. And if we play this, Dotty should be behind the table, which you can see, and it's included by the table, which is what we want to see. So if I move around, you'll see a little bit of flicker here. It, it, it's the reason you're seeing this is because we're in editor simulating what we would do in the real world from photogrammetry. So what he is actually being occluded by is the depth map that is running over this whole scene as opposed to the unity geometry that you would normally see when you build a regular game. But what we've got is occlusions already working and we haven't had to do any work. The reason for that is when you go to the depth manager, everything's already enabled. So if you look down here, it's, it's already saying that we, we have the occlusion mode on. There's a few settings here. So auto means pick the best possible occlusion mode for your device. Depending on what device it is, there are a few options to choose from. On older devices, we use this method called screen space mesh, which is where we are physically building an occluder of geometry to put in the scene that's invisible so that it will hide the, the uh, parts that are behind the table or any other objects in the scene. The depth buffer method will write the depth that we produce from the cameras directly into Unity's depth buffer, giving you a nicer edge. But this can only work on newer devices. So we have both of these modes. If you just leave it in auto, it'll pick the one that works for the phone that it's running on. A bunch of other settings in here, they do various different things. So uh, keyframe frequency is how often we update the actual occlusion uh, system. So it's running at 20 frames a second instead of 60 on the phone, so it's a little bit more efficient. You can change this slider based on whether you want it to run more often or less often, which will change the, the overall quality of the, the amount of frames returned. So we interpolate between each frame. So the more you say to do here, the less interpolation we do. 20 is, is a good place to put this. It works for 90% of all cases. There are a few other options here. You can, you can tick prefer smooth edges if you like. So again, this is to do with if your device supports uh, some Techniques that we use to make the depth map a little nicer, it'll turn them on as it's preferred. If it, if it can't work for your device, it'll just turn it off, so you can just switch that one on. Interpolation mode, there are a couple of options in here. Leaving it as the default smooth is fine for what you're doing. Balanced is the way it used to do it in older versions of the AIDK. So if you were using this for a previous project and you wanted it to look the same, you could set it to balance. The last setting here is this interpolation preference. It's a magic number for most people. It says 0 0.9. What this is actually for is the way we do that interpolation that I was referring to with the 20 frames a second is between every frame, we need to realign where the camera would have moved to because we haven't got an update from the phone because we're only getting one every, every three frames. So this number helps us do the projection of where the camera would have been and what the, the background depth would look like. 
depending on whether you're doing a very close up scene or a very far away scene, this number needs to change. It's very hard for any human to set that. So luckily there's another script that we can add for this, which we will drop in now. And what this script will do is in this kind of case where you just have uh, one agent in the scene, that's going to be your hero character. You can always fixate on them and say, where are they? Let's adjust this, this distance so that they always look good. And with, with that script, it'll make a simple scene like this much better. So let us add in a adaptive interpolation manager, so a depth interpolation adapter of this guy. We drop that in, and it's got uh, some options. So a clue D, as in what are we looking for? And in our scene, we just need to find the Yeti. So in here, Yeti. I think Body Geo is the top of his hierarchy. Sorry, I'll just have to quickly check. Yes, a Yeti, uh, Yeti Geo is what we're looking for. Uh, so I'll just quickly go back and make sure that I've got that set. Uh, okay. Let's do a few more settings here. Uh, as long as we're catching an object that's uh, reasonably at the top of the hierarchy, we should be okay. Yeah, yeah, body here, it's fine. So the way the script works is it's just looking for the depth of this object to help it adjust the, the script based on where that object is moved to and when it's moving around the scene. So that should be fine and if we save that. Something else that I tend to do if you are going to use our mascot here uh, in the model, it, you can see it's got this target ridicule added at the bottom of it. Probably don't want that in our scene because it'll flicker against the ground because it's a big quad and when you put that on your carpet in your room, it probably won't look great. So I just tend to come in here and say the cursor, we don't, we don't need to see that. And also the shadow, which is a baked in shadow, it's like a dot underneath him. We don't need that either, so we just, I just turn those two off. It means that it'll look a little bit better when we actually run this in an AR session. So again, if I run this, it should look pretty much the same in the editor. We're not really gonna see any difference, but as you can see at his feet, there's no longer that big quad. He's also still not on the ground because I haven't put him at the exact uh, height that he should be uh, in, in the scene. Right. So I can adjust him by pulling him down a little. Just click on the Yeti and then move him down. His feet are on the ground and we'll put him over there. There we go. So this is all working in editor and you have occlusions running, which is quite nice, but it's uh, not the easiest uh, test in the world. What, you, what you're looking for is, is does this work when you move them around? But as I've placed it, the object in a fixed position, it's nice for our little test scene, but when we run this on a device, it will just mean that the Yeti is always sort of three meters in front of you, no matter what you do. So you could test with that because you'll just move the phone around to position where they are, but we could also just write a little script so that when we quick click anywhere in the scene, the Yeti gets placed there and then that would work on the phone as well. So if you just click anywhere on your phone, the Yeti will be placed where you want to place them. So to do that, we just need to write a little script. So if we come back in here and we create a script, and we can call this uh, occlusions tutorial. Or anything else you'd like to call it, that's completely fine. Uh, in here, you've got your default script, so just quickly open that up uh, in whatever editor you would like to use. Um, you don't have to use the one that I am. Uh, oh, full screen. Sorry, I'm just failing at using a computer at the moment. Let's just resize that so it fits on the screen. I don't need to take any service. So what we want to do with this script is just pass in the Yeti object so that we can move it around. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a game object. Uh, and we can just call that our character. Now you don't have to use a Yeti here, you could use any, any asset you have if you wanted to grab Unity Churn off the website for Unity or you wanted to just use one of your own characters or even a cube is fine. You just need to pass something in here, it needs to be public so that we can do that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is basically in the update we'll do some checking for input. So if you clicked on the screen, uh, grab the position that you clicked on the screen and then what we'll do is a hit test into the, the scene geometry to see where we should place that uh, character. 
there's, a, there's quite a bit of stuff we're going to have to do to get that to run. So I'm just going to start plonking in little bits of script as I go and uh, testing them as, as that happens. So the first thing that we'll want to do is in our update loop, just add in a test for input. So there's nothing fancy here. It's just the normal Unity. If it, there was a touch, do a touch, and we'll add a function to handle that touching. I am being lazy and copying and pasting rather than typing because it's it, it should be easier for you guys to follow rather than waiting for me to type out some rather long, uh, rather long bits of script. There will be a text version of this available for you guys as well to make this a little bit easier to follow along. Uh, so here's our touch began function. What we're going to need in order to make this work is we'll be using a function that's in the ARDK that does hit testing, which is on the frame object and it's just called hit test. But in order to use uh, these functions, we, we need a few extra objects from the ARDK itself. And one thing we need to catch is the AR session. And the way you do that is we have this session factory object that you can hook a callback to, to say, when has the AR session started? And in that callback, we can catch the current session for use in our object. The reason we do it this way is no, if you had set up this scene to be uh, activated when someone clicks a button or drops in for a, a menu, you need to wait until that session has been created in order to do any of the work with it. So we'll hook this uh, callback and then we'll drop in a function for the callback itself. So when the AR session starts, this function will get called. And in here, all we are going to do is actually just uh, cache the session itself. So a couple of a couple of cleanup things. First, we just say, well, the callbacks happen, so just remove it. Just a little bit of cleanup to say, don't don't continually run this callback. We don't want it to happen a lot. And then we want to save the session out. We need a variable to store this in, which will be a, a, a IAR session. And we'll just store that in there, and that just means that we have access to the session object that we can use later in the calls that we need for hit testing. Now. What I'm going to put in this uh, hit testing function is it's actually a bunch of code that's very similar to what is in a helper that we have called uh, a uh, hit test. Uh, hit test. Uh, yeah. AI hit test helper. Sorry, is what I, I was looking for. Uh, hit test helper. Apologies, I'm looking in the wrong place. If I go in here and I search for a uh, hit test helper. So in here, sorry, it's AI, the uh, hit test. We have this uh, function here that already does a bunch of things for you, very similar to what I'm going to be writing. And you'll see that there's a touch event in here already and a bunch of things that you could be using to getting the point. Essentially what I'm doing is writing my own version of this because I don't want to do this instantiate uh, line here, which would mean every time you clicked, it would put a new version of the Yeti into the scene. We just want to move the one we have. So I'm essentially going to rewrite this chunk of code uh, in our tutorial. So let's get going. What we need to do to start with is first check that we have a valid frame. So we don't want to run this when there isn't a valid frame. So from that session that we just cached, is, is there a, a frame here? And if there isn't, we'll drop out. Uh, we also want to, we will also need access to the current camera for, for the hit test function. So we're going to need to cache the camera into the, the object as well. So I'm just going to make a camera object at the top, which is public. So that we will just hook this in from the script itself and then in here we have access to the camera to check that it exists once we do that uh, we then need to do our hit test so i am going to drop in a little bit of code for that too so within the uh, current frame there's a hit test function that we can call it needs to know the screen size to be able to do the math that it needs to do uh, the touch position, so from here we're getting the touch itself, so we can pass it in and use the position. And then this is basically saying use whatever we said we're, we're doing in the, the setup of the, the depth manager, like horizontal or vertical, 
but if nothing is there, just do horizontal because most likely that's the one that, that they're gonna, gonna want to do. When this function runs, it returns a hit test object. So let's just check that there was a hit because if there wasn't, we don't need to continue. So did this, uh, did this line test into the scene hit anything? And if not, uh, return. If it did hit something, what we want to do is move our character. And that's easy enough to do. We've got the character object that we're going to pass in. We get its transform, its position. Then from this hit test uh, object that we're returning, we can ask for the world position of that hit. And we just set it to the character's position. Something else that is, is handy is we may want the actual character to rotate to face us. So that whenever they're placed, they're, they're looking towards us rather than just whatever random direction we uh, started with. And that's easy enough to do with uh, the lookout function on transform. So we just basically say, get the camera and the position of the object. The reason we're not passing the uh, camera's Y here is we don't want to tilt the camera around, we, the Yeti around. We want the Yeti to be flat on the ground, but facing us. So it'll only rotate to look at us in the X and the Z, but not Y. And with that, you've now got a hit test function that'll let you place your object when you click on it. So save this script and we can test it. So if we go back to Unity and we click on our camera object again, we need to add our script to it. I've got a few errors here. I'll quickly quickly fix those actually. Uh, yes, I didn't put in very many namespaces that we're gonna need on our uh, tutorial script here. So when we're running, we're gonna need quite a few, uh, we need access to a few things from the ARDK, so I'll just uh, add those in now. So we need to be using AR itself, and we need to be using, um, what are the other ones we've got here? We'll need config, a couple others. So will just drop all these in, here we go. So the AR system itself, don't need to let it be, uh, the utilities, this and this is for some of the manager stuff for these factories. Uh, the sessions, because we're passing through args, and the hit test, because we need to use the hit test. So let's save that, and let's come back over here, and hopefully we won't have any more errors. There we go. Errors are all gone. The next thing we need to do is actually put that script on something. So again, being lazy, I'm just gonna drop it on the camera. You do not have to put it on the camera. It can be its own object or wherever you'd like. Um, I'll just drop it in here because then they're all together. It just makes it easier to demo the, the, all of the bits. Uh, what character do we want to place? Well, that's our Yeti. So in here, in our scene, we grab our Yeti. And we say that's the one we want to place. And what is the camera? So we just say it's what's the main camera. If I run this now, in theory, when I click, we should be able to move the Yeti to a clicked position. However, it's not working. So very quickly what we can do is um, add in another manager called the plane manager, which will essentially say that, hey, this plane is, is the geometry that we understand. So in here we can add an ARDK plane, oh, hang on. too many words, plane manager, this AR plane manager. If we add this in, uh, we will get planes detected as planes. This little uh, plane prefab here, we need to just set this to uh, plane, something from our assets tree. We will have this here, which is this plane prefab. That'll draw a nice effect over any planes that it, it finds. So you'll get a little grid drawn so that we know that they're working. Let's save that again, run one more time. And do, 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 we should get some grid. Apologies, I missed one setting, which I noticed specifically. We said don't detect anything. Uh, slightly off screen here, but the, I'm going to select horizontal, uh, or actually we can just select everything, it's fine. And then we will run this again. And we should now get some effects drawn. Yes, here we go. So now you can see that the ADK has said, oh, these things all look like planes. And because they look like planes, you can click on them, and there we go, Yeti gets moved around. We can place them where we'd like. And so now we've got this little demo, which is quite neat. Uh, we can place a character of our choosing wherever we'd like to place them in the scene. We can then test that they are occluded correctly. And what we have now is a fully tested built-in editor system that will work on phone. So if we stop this and we just say build, so command V, or you know, go into the build settings and set up what you need to build it. Wait for a moment while it does its thing. I am working on iOS, so it will have to launch Xcode and do a bit of compiling. 
But once that's done, it'll launch on my phone and I'll be able to place the Yeti in the real world. Xcode was building in the background there, so I just didn't bring it to the foreground. Just clicked on it so you can see it going. It's just about to launch uh, onto my phone, hopefully. Yep, there we go. I have um, paired my phone with Qt. So that's a little trick if you didn't know uh, how to do this. Is um, you can do a movie recording and tell it to use the camera from your phone, which is a nice way to capture this, but you can see it's, it's detecting the ground, and if I click, there's our Yeti. Look at, look at that, it's all, all magic. Now I've got this occluder here, which I'm just going to slide with my foot in front of him, and there you go, he's occluded. Uh, all, all working, and if I, I click another position, he gets to where he needs to go. And that is the entire demo. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy playing with ARDK.